Well, hello there, everybody, and you join us here today to talk about brand new watches from Rolex, from Breitling, from Omega, and all of the top watchmakers. Only the watchmakers didn't design them, and neither did we. We got AI to do it. Let's see how they got on. Well, hello there, Tom. Um, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Actually, thanks. I don't care. Oh. Well, with that being said... What do you want? <laughs> you know how the other day we had a competition to see who could get the best, cheapest watches and you cheated using AI? It doesn't sound like something I would do, but go on. Well, the AI came up with some rather good choices, and so rather than rue your decision to cheat, I thought, why not make the most of this? I wonder if AI can not only think like a human when it comes to picking watches, but can think like a human when it comes to designing them. So I thought we would punch in some sexy watch brands into AI and see what it can think of when it comes to next year's hot watches. Sounds good. Let's see what it comes up with. Tom, I've got mine. You've got yours. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. I've started with the big boy, because why not, right? Rolex. Now, considering how, how much of an evolution the process of designing a Rolex is over the years, I saw there's, there's a lot of data there for the AI to draw from and extrapolate from. And I, I'm, I'm pretty happy here. Because we've got a few different options, Tom. Yep. We have got a steel and gold dive watch. But you'll notice by how small the bracelet is that this dive watch is enormous. And I think that's where we're going. We're seeing a lot more gold. We're seeing massive dive watches. And to me, deep sea challenge, steel and gold. Next year, you wait and see. Yeah, I like the little um, addition of a dish that could be an escape valve on the dial there. And I like the way they've moved the magnifying cyclops into the middle of the dial there. Um, that should please some people. Yeah, why not? We've also got full green again here. Rolex had the Submariner, green bezel, green dial. They took away the green dial and stuck with just the green bezel, but they're going back again. Extra crown even, why not? They've even shown us with their third option here that this is all about deep sea divers because you can see how deep that watch looks. It's not right up there, it's deep in the, the black ocean abyss. The Air King, do you remember how they added the crown guards this year and it was just like this revolutionary moment? Well, they're not just adding crown guards, they are making them even bigger and even chunky with a nice blue dial there, like crown guards. I think winner, winner, chicken dinner, Tom. Yeah, sure. I don't think Omega's going to be able to top this, Tom, and I know you have Omega, so throw down. You are actually looking at the AI-generated images for Omega's next bundle of releases. It's not a continuation of its interpretation of Rolex's new releases. Now, I know you <laughs> might think that, and it might look that way. It's actually very shrewdly observed by the AI that what we're seeing here is um, very much in the vein of what Rolex might release. Um, but no, this is Omega. Um, so, of course, you've got Crown Guards, we've got diving it's playing playing it safe with omega i think that's fair i think that's wise you never want to be the one that just goes out there into the blue and just says crown guards because you just don't know how that's going to go down no brave brave stuff well this is brightling tom oh and i know what you're thinking despite the expert work of creative director sylvan berneron who has reimagined a lot of the brightling collections with beauty and elegance the AI seems to think that actually that's a bad move. That people like us, who we, we're just talking nonsense, we're, we have opinions, but the buying public, they want crowded dials. They want all of the numbers. They want to see more print than space around the print, like the old days. And so that's where we're going back to. Negative space isn't a word in the vocabulary of Breitling in 2023. Looks good. They look like Breitlings. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of new model lines as well, by the look of it. We've got the L9 and we've got the the Flit. 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 Maybe that's, is it Elite or Flight? Ooh. Maybe it's a combination of Elite Flight. There you have Flit. it. Flit. You've got the early scoop, everyone, from Breitling via the AI. Tom, your next one, I believe, is Hublot. Yes, as you can see, um, Hublot are going to be sticking with their quite large size watch. They're going to be adopting a new abbreviation of the logo with HB um, emblazoned on gold on the bezels there. <laughs> and 
We've got just <laughs> huge blocks of metal on the side of the cases there. Could be some kind of emergency release um, to jettison your watch. In case someone sees you wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, very exciting year for Hublot ahead, it looks like, hopefully. So I look forward to that. Such big and impressive watches that none of them fit inside the photo. <laughs> Tom, last year we saw from Panerai a big push in the submersible collection. And for a brand with three models, you'll be unsurprised to see that the next year you're going to see a big push with submersible. We've got the submersible bezel with all the little nodules there, quite expertly realised, yeah. and the, the big loom plots. But this time we're going to go for complication. Lots of extra subdials, all in kind of weird places, very symmetrically imbalanced to give you the sense of unease that the original wearers of Panerai watches might have felt as they infiltrated their enemy underwater bases. You've got huge cases, you've got lots of knobbly bits. You've got bits that look a little bit brown, like they might give you some sort of radioactive disease. This is the Panerai 2023 collection. Yeah, I mean, it looks very true to Panerai. It looks like the next step. I really like this innovation where the lugs go all the way down and then curl <laughs> around and return. I think that will be a really exciting innovation. I look forward to seeing that. And just for a little extra sparkle, there's an enormous diamond at six o'clock. That is nice. Now... An exciting new lineup for AP next year, I guarantee, based on these um, stolen images. So it looks like the departure of the Royal Oak. No more Royal Oaks. No octagonal cases in this lineup. Um, I think it's trying to make up for the fact that they released 12 last year. Um, so <laughs> we're going to get something new. We've got a very nice sort of dusky bronzy one we've got looks like a very very complicated mess of spaghetti in that one <laughs> i think this looks like a vintage piece that they're gonna run earth and uh, re-release and then finally i'm most excited for the pun bean um which looks like a tourbillon <laughs> um yeah look forward to that this is a real u-turn for AP. They've pushed the Royal Oak so hard. Now, either the AI is so stupid that even it hasn't figured out that Audemars Piguet is obsessed with the Royal Oak, or it's also so sick of the Royal Oak that it's decided to ignore it completely. However, in terms of AP's next releases, oh, bringing it back, giving you that credibility, the vintage flavour, the pun bean, and I think they're even going so far as to throw out their old tagline, which was, um, to break the rules, First, you have to master them. And that's being replaced with a remember Dinvens Smith. I like it, it's bold. Tom, I'm interested to see what you think of what I've got for Patek Philippe, or rather what the AI has got here, because mm. remember how the Nautilus was discontinued and then brought back again? Well, it's gonna be discontinued again in a shocking twist upon a twist. Double bluff, Tom. No yep. Nautilus at all. We're copying Rolex. We're copying Tag Heuer. We're copying Gucci. But the big hit of the year is going to be an integrated bracelet piece, which is quite small and delicate, which Patek Philippe are going to call the Pigly. Ah. Now, I believe this is, this is a subtle dig at the people who purchased the Nautilus in the hope of making an enormous amount of money. It's saying, oh, you want your integrated bracelet? You can have it, but you'll have to wear what looks like a lady's watch and you will have to say it's the Pigly. Yeah, I really like the way the big onion crown is just barely hanging on in there from the <laughs> the stem there. Um, yeah, I look forward to the, the pogey, or what was it? The piggly. <laughs> right, now, we're going to see a little bit of a mix-up from Grand Seiko, and I think we're going to lean into a bit more complications. We saw this year the stunning uh, Kodo, mm. and I think maybe we're going to see a bit of that high-end complication integrated in some of their pieces next year. So um, you can see we've got lots of subdials on this image here. So that could be some sort of perpetual calendar. That one actually looks like it's got the quartz battery hatch on the dial there, so that's quite nice. And of course, we're gonna still see a continuation of Grand Seiko's fascination and inspiration by the natural world around them. As you can see, this product image is photographed on some sort of metamorphic rock there. I don't know if that's some sort of weathered stone that only appears 
in the car park of the Grand Seiko workshop. <laughs> but yeah, it looks very nice. All of those people who have bemoaned the power reserve on the dial, well, they're doubling down, aren't they? They're going for power reserve and everything else as well. And why not? Let's see some of that expert watchmaking from Grand Seiko. Really classic stuff. Tom, but we've all been waiting for the, the big brand, Richard Mille. What are they doing in 2023? Well, I can tell you, Tom, because they're going bigger, bolder, and even more wiggly than ever before. How, you know how Richard Mille likes to, to experiment with colours and shapes? Uh, they've used layered carbon in the past before. They've used different types of uh, ceramics, and magnesium, all these exotic things. Now they're using what can only be described as the imprint in mud left behind by a deep treaded shoe for that really outdoors, rugged, full on aesthetic experience. No angle is quite straight. No curve is quite uniform. This is yeah. whichever angle you look at these watches from, you're going to get an entirely different experience and, and one that is equally confusing because within the watches as well, it has complications. And then some more complications and even more complications yet. So the justification of the $7 million price tags are immediately apparent. But nevertheless, it's a bold move for Richard Mille. It is really in there. It's really hammering home what it's always been about. One step ahead of Hublot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's some fascinating case shapes going on here. I can't wait to see these when they come out. Um, incidentally, I'm certain that if you ask an AI to show you images of slightly melted transformers, you get the same pictures as uh, new Richard Mill watches. <laughs> I've got one more for you. I couldn't wait to see what they put out this year. So mm. this is the predictions for new Invicta releases in 2023. Um, I'm very excited, Tom. We've got their flagship model, the Nitia Tiktia, first release of the first quarter. Um, so get ready for that. That's a really nice, stealthy GMT number there with uh, a record-breaking perpetual calendar. And then we've got a really cool uh, smartwatch. This is the only thing I can think that would need nine pushes. <laughs> we've got a really nice steel and gold uh, dial here. Now, what you're seeing there in, in that sort of gold um, subdial is actually uh, a canister for the uranium that powers it. And so you need to sort of turn that to unlock and pull out the canister there. And then finally, uh, we've got a, another Breitling, a Breitling Colt, <laughs> automatic. <laughs> um, so look out, Breitling, because Invicta is stealing your ideas, as is the AI. I'll tell you what, this has been a real shock move from Invicta. A massive turnaround on some of the incredible pieces it's made in the past to become a reserved, almost respectable brand. Yeah. I don't know if I admire it or not. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was about time. I mean, they were sort of slowly heading in that direction anyway, weren't they? So um, <laughs> I think they're really going to deliver this year. Well, there you go, dear viewer and listener. Our AI-powered predictions for the watches of next year. Do you think those predictions are good. Do you think Tom's predictions were better than mine? What predictions do you have for the future of the watch industry? Go ask your local friendly AI and they will probably tell you something that's completely wrong. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye bye.